So uh, th my biggest motivation is the fact uh, that I have four children um, between the ages of five and 15. That to me, over the last two years, Vermont's become a state that uh, moves closer and closer towards unaffordability for the future and unsustainability. So to me, it's about uh, putting uh, all of the information that I've acquired over the last three years on city council, being involved uh, as a community advocate into play um, the best way that I know how. Um, I've, I'm a person that uh, puts my money where my mouth is. Uh, so I've uh, made it clear that I need to jump into the game um, because that's most important for what's going on right now. Um, I constantly uh, work with children at Barry City School as the transportation sub coordinator. Um, and I see that uh, children are vital within our community. Uh, and without them staying in our community, um, there's no lifeline. Um, so really the motivation for me uh, is my community, uh, the current community and the future of my community. I think that this is really a huge question going on right now um, and, and how we fund that between the local control of, of allowing our school boards to decide what's most important in our school budgets uh, and also being able to balance that on a state end uh, with equalized education. Um, having things be uh, less complicated in an education funding uh, would be important for everyone to understand how that works. Um, and to me, I think that we need to streamline some of the things like transportation within our state for the schools, that uh, there are ways that we can save millions of dollars by centralizing things like transportation um, and also some of the health care costs um, that contribute to the rising costs of the budgets. Um, without being able to uh, change some of those things, costs are going to continue to rise um, I also think that education funding needs to change to a more uh, income-based approach and less property tax approach. That if people have more skin in the game when it comes to paying uh, their fair share uh, into the educational system and not just on the backs of the property owners, um, then they would have more, um, more stake in what's being done at the local level. So the single biggest issue I constantly hear about on city council when we're trying to build is the cost, that it costs way too much to build. So there are opportunities that we have presented as far as um, setting up a program like a five-year freeze that the governor Scott's administration uh, had proposed. So it's essentially where you pay the base of the property tax of the building, uh, you build on the building and then you incrementally have that increase to the maximum property value. So, for example, if the building that they're doing would be a $5 million build, uh, the property value and the land is only based at $100,000, you then increase that by 20% each year, giving back to the community. What that does is it lowers the uh, the startup costs. It allows them to have a lower cost to start up in the in the beginning um, and that's one of the huge things that could help. Uh, it's an investment in the future. Uh, it's not something that you're going to see right away, but it's going to something that you're going to see continue under the tax rolls for 20% each year. Uh, or even if you needed to extend it to a 10 year, you could do 10% each year. Um, but things like that are ways that we can invest into the future of our housing. We haven't invested enough into our housing. During COVID, uh, I was the operations manager with the Salvation Army, uh, dealing with people, boots on the ground. Um, the original impact uh, of allowing everyone to get into a free hotel room for safety was great, but um, there were really no guardrails put into place for that program long-term. So we continued to allow that program to spiral out of control to where it is currently. And we need to put some boundaries in place for people that we need to say, look, these are the things that we need you to continue to do to better yourself in order to have this housing. Um, right now, we're, we're in a situation where people are coming against the, uh, the cap in, in how many days they can stay. Um, and that's I, I don't know how to fix that problem. Um, but I do know that if we have benchmarks in place for people to achieve, 
Um, we can bring people up out of some of these situations, but we also need to provide them the services that they need. So without uh, giving them mental health services, substance abuse services, counseling um, to get through housing crises, to actually find somewhere to live, um, without all these wraparound services, um, just throwing money at things isn't going to work, and it's just wasteful. I think there are some huge funding gaps in general. We see that within the Barry City Council trying to rebuild after two floods. Um, just that huge issue with small towns not having the funding uh, and then having to deal with FEMA on top of that and not being re reimbursed for some things uh, or taking a long time to be reimbursed for other things. Um, we need a more regionalized approach with our storm with our um, river systems um, and our storm uh, watershed management approach. Um, to have a more regionalized approach, uh, we could fill better applications. Um, things like Central Vermont uh, Regional uh, Planning Commission uh, is working with Barry City Council, um, so that way we can get some other projects done uh, that aren't just based on Barry. Um, but are based more on a regionalized approach because what happens up and downstream affects uh, affects everyone. So we need to be talking about things on a more regionalized approach uh, and a less individualized approach that uh, small communities don't have the manpower to put these grants in. Uh, we're seeing a huge issue with, with grants management uh, when it comes to the city of Barrie, uh, one of the larger cities within the community in the state. Um, so to have these smaller towns like Plainfield uh, or Cabot or Marshfield uh, or even out in the valley to try to complete um, robust FEMA applications is just insane and, and it's not sustainable. So we need help from the state. We need help uh, with technical assistance um, when it comes to those things. So we really need more technical assistance people um, as well that can help these municipalities draw down the federal money me this is pretty simple it was decided by the voters of vermont in 2022 um and the voters made their choice um my opinion um as a person doesn't matter whatsoever um because there are laws put in place um i have no no stance to repeal or replace uh, any of this laws that are currently in place um there are laws in, in place for a reason my stance was that uh in 2022 when i had to run for the state house um, and really it's the same position that I have today that, uh, you know, the voters have made a choice, um, and I absolutely, uh, live by that choice. To me, it's really been, uh, a thing about listening and how we haven't had our legislature listening. And to me, I've been a person who's always listened twice as much as I speak. So it's really just about listening and uh, being an advocate for our future to make sure that we have a future.